and she may be going for an armbar. Yeah, okay. All right. Damn. Disappointing. Okay. She makes me sad with that armbar. <laughs> the art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis, and in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to the five self-defense moves every woman should know by uh, Joanna Official or Joanna So Official. Of course, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button, click the little thumbs up button, and click the bell so you can get notified anytime I make a new video. Of course, if you live too far away from Indianapolis to train with me in person, you can now train with me online through our online self-defense course at Kenpo360 Dot com, where you will learn the 18 self-defense techniques essential for survival. We cover stand, we cover clinch, we cover ground. Everything you need is at Kenpo360.com. Before we get started, I do have a bit of a bone to pick when it comes to the self-defense that's targeted towards women. I find more often than not that the self-defense that is taught to women is like a dumbed down version of effective martial arts. And I've always found that very frustrating. I come from a Italian Catholic family, which means I have very strong, intelligent women. It, I never understood why we take something as nuanced and complex as self-defense and try to m put it into some like kind of dumbed down, you know, two hour course and then that's what we pitch to women but then when we teach men we teach them the real thing um, more often than not what gets taught to women is actually martial arts that wasn't designed for their situation for example probably the single most common style that actually gets taught to women is actually Japanese jiu-jitsu. Most people in the women's self-defense market maybe don't even know that's what they're doing, but if you see a lot of wrist locks, you see a lot of like throws, it's Japanese jiu-jitsu. And Japanese jiu-jitsu was very specifically designed for samurai. That it, the idea was like if I lost my sword or something, I would use my jujitsu to subdue my opponent. So these are young, powerful soldiers smothered and covered in armor in the best shape of their life fighting on a battlefield. That's what jujitsu was made for. And then you're going to teach it to a 130 pound woman to defend herself. And th they just aren't the same thing. And so what will work really well for um, a guy my size and maybe a bit younger than me um, is not necessarily going to work for that 120 pound woman. And so I, I see this all the time when it comes to women's self-defense. Um, so hopefully this video is different. We will see. But I will tell you nine times out of ten when I see women's self-defense, they're teaching techniques that probably won't work for a woman. Uh, so they call it women's self-defense and they teach them something that literally won't work for a woman. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Of course, as per usual for my reaction videos, I have no audio on this just for copyright purposes. So uh, as we can see, we're starting off with the very classic self-defense beginner's technique of dealing with a wrist grab. This is a great introduction to self-defense. The bridge has already been made. Um, so you're able to kind of understand what it feels like to fight from a close quarters position. The wrist grab, whereas it seems like it's not all that important, it shows up in every facet of grappling. So if somebody is trying to take you somewhere, lots of times they're grabbing your wrist. Another example, they're trying to keep you somewhere, they're going to grab your wrist. So you imagine maybe you're talking to a guy, right? And then you say, you know what, I'm done with you. And you turn around and walk away. He grabs your wrist and pulls you back and then won't let go. That's what this situation is all about. But the wrist grab is a great beginner's technique because uh, it really allows the teacher to teach a bunch of concepts. So let's see how she deals with a wrist grab. This is very specifically what we call a cross side wrist grab. So she's covering it, which is kind of cool. And then she goes for a joint lock. Yep. Like I said, most of the time, women's self-defense boils down to Japanese jujitsu. All right. So she's going for that little wrist lock. Where we go from there. And then she's driving them to the ground with it. Okay, this is a bad technique. This this right here, unfortunately, um, where a woman is practicing on a woman is one of the reasons why women's self-defense tends not be that great. It's not that women suck at martial arts, it's that a woman needs to know how to defend herself against the kind of people who are attacking her. And whereas yes, women do attack women, I think most women who are in a self-defense course are worried about having to defend themselves 
against men. And this little rotation into a wrist lock, she's holding on to it so that the arm doesn't move, and then she's rotating and re-grabbing. The idea is this puts a tremendous amount of strain on the wrist, and then she's able to drive the person down with this joint lock. The truth is, literally, she would not be able to do this to somebody who outweighed her by 50 pounds, which is very likely in a self-defense scenario. All you have to do is go up to any dude you know and just play a game. Say, I'm gonna bend your wrist, and you try to keep it straight. Just play that game. And you'll see, you could take both your hands and try to drive that wrist to a bent position, and you won't. And it will take them very little effort to resist it. Wrist locks, whereas they work, they, they are extremely difficult to do in real life. Um, most of the time, a wrist lock is something you're kind of getting because that person made like this uh, a, a structural mistake and you're capitalizing on it. Like they've already bent their wrist and so you're gonna go ahead and crash it. And then once she gets this hand over, the person just kind of falls to the ground that's another very unrealistic response. It's not gonna happen. I have no real nice way to say it. This is a terrible technique. Um, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, where they teach a samurai art to a woman as self-defense. Um, I'm sure a samurai would uh, be able to develop the skill to do this to uh, someone, but it's not realistic for um, the streets, if you wanna call it that. It's not realistic for women's self-defense. So uh, I hate this technique with a passion. So let's go ahead and look at our next one here. So she's coming around, big circle. I, I yeah, it's dumb. I was gonna try to compliment it, but I, I just hate it. So next technique is if somebody's coming up and uh, shouldering up to you and hugging to you, and they, you know they're kind of invading your personal space. This is a great example of where you need to have soft techniques and hard techniques because a position like this could be extremely threatening. But this position like this could also just be, you know, kind of a slightly drunk dude who doesn't know his own space. You don't need to ruin their life in order to make it clear to them that you don't want to be touched like this. Um, so, you know, she could go straight for the kill or she could do something uh, just kind of nice and knock them off of her. We'll see what they go with. So he comes underneath and then goes into a hammerlock. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um... So her initial response is what we'd call the soft release, how she kind of just rips that arm off of her. Super nice, just like, don't fucking touch me like that. It's very clear you don't like it. And then she goes into what we call a hammer lock, which is where you're bending this arm behind the back. This position is a very good controlling position, but it is also a very hard position to get someone into. That in, um, if you, if you were to go online and you were to look up video of police officers trying to arrest a resisting opponent, this is the position they're trying to get them into. They're trying to get their arms into a hammerlock position so they can put handcuffs on them behind their back. And you can see if the guy's big, sometimes it takes two or three dudes to get the person into this position so they can arrest them. It's very rarely just like one dude cleanly arrests a dude um, if he's resisting. Yes, if the guy's compliant, it's not hard, but if you look at videos of cops arresting people who are resisting, no, it is extremely hard. And usually in these videos, the police officer's in great shape and the guy that they're uh, uh, trying to arrest isn't in that great of shape. They're either really overweight or they're like really skinny and tweaking out and it's still a really hard fight. This position, the hammerlock, whereas it is an effective position, it's definitely not what I would consider, uh, you know, one of the five self-defense moves that every woman should know. This is another example of Japanese jiu-jitsu being taught, the samurai art being taught to women. This particular technique is not going to go over well. I like the initial remove the the you know arm off of your head. That's really good. Um, but from there, I would think if you're trying to be more devastating, I'd go into the ballistic side of things. I would use a sidekick to their knee or an eye strike or something like that. I think going in for this hammerlock, you're gonna get about here and then they're gonna fling you off of them and know that you were trying to fight back and probably just escalate the situation. The hammerlock works if I'm bigger than you. That's when the hammerlock works. <laughs> So uh, I would not consider that good self-defense. All right, guys, we're we're not doing so hot. We're two we're two into the five, and uh, both of them are no good. Let's see what their next one looks like. Self-defense against a hair pull. All right, so this is this is very specific for um, um, everybody who's not me. 
No. <laughs> yeah. So, so someone pulling your hair is one of the most powerful controlling points in the body. When you study any kind of grappling, whether it be wrestling, judo, or Brazilian jiu-jitsu, one of the first things you learn is that if you control the head, you control the body. And the because the hair is like a thousand tiny handles attached to the head, it allows you to control the head very easily. Um, bad guys understand this. It's crazy. You can be considerably bigger than a guy and then he grabs your hair and yanks and you whoop, and you just go right with it because your neck is just not strong enough to resist and where the head goes, the body will follow. So yeah, being grabbed by the hair is a devastating um, assault that has to be addressed probably with the uh, most aggressive force that you can. Uh, in the last technique, I said there's soft techniques, hard techniques. You go right for a hard technique. Someone grabs your hair because there's no way there's like a misunderstanding happening. They're trying to fuck you up. So let's let's go ahead and see how she handles it. All right, do the overhook. Okay, that's like all right. So what she's doing here is she's doing overhook into what we call the bar song. So she, she makes a little bit of space, which is going to extend their arm. And that's smart because when your people are most strong, close to their core. So the further out they are, the weaker they are. I assume that's what she's doing, making some space. So she's wrapping around. <laughs> I may have been wrong about her getting, getting that space. She wraps around and this particular thing, some people call it, it goes by a lot of different names, but uh, I always call this the bar song because you're breaking their arm by doing this like, bar shanty thing um, that you're doing this sort of thing and what this particular move does is it dislocates your opponent's shoulder um, it's really a powerful move I actually use this a lot in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Judo that when I'm grappling with guys they'll grab a hold of my lapel and I'll bar song over and what I usually do because I'm in the gi I can feed their gi to my hand and so I can actually secure this position very permanently and have a whole another hand to grip fight with, uh, which is super duper nice, highly recommended. So the overhook is really, really good. I'll be honest, I don't have hair, so I have no way of testing this technique out to see like how badly it pulls your hair to uh, do this technique. Um, but I think that's probably a good like initial response. Um, and then of course her opponent just goes flying to the ground. The, the, one of the biggest problems with this video is the fact that her um, her partner is clearly not a fighter. So uh, all of these techniques are like extremely effective on her, but she's like this little tiny woman, like look how skinny she is. Just little tiny woman getting tossed around. Um, this is gonna be, of course, most things are gonna be very effective on her. But once again, self, it doesn't matter what works on your friends. It matters what works on someone who's bigger, stronger, and uh, more athletic than you are. That's the guy who we're training to beat. So the bar song would work, but man, that would hurt your hair. And look, if you look, yeah, the, the girl is slowly losing her grip, uh, which just means she doesn't have a lot of forearm strength. This would not strip the grip off your hair. I can assure you of that. If they let go, it's just because they don't want the pain in their shoulder. They wanna hold on to that. They're gonna keep hold of your hair it's probably that she has a lack of forearm strength, to be honest. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this one. <laughs> that it's it's a technique that the actual overhook into a bar song is a good technique. Doing it when someone is grabbing your hair, um, I think may just result in you getting your neck pulled back really, really violently. I don't think it will make them let go of your hair if that's what you think is going to happen. Um, I think there's a lot of other more effective techniques that you can do, most notably, like I have mentioned before, relying on the ballistic side of self-defense, eye jabs, elbows, knees, side kicks to the lay to the to the knee, like like relying on those techniques to um incapacitate your opponent quickly. Once again, this is kind of more of that like Japanese jujitsu base, which is not that Japanese jujitsu doesn't work. I want to make that really clear. It's that it's not the best for women's self-defense. And that's something I'm always trying to stress to people that it's not about what works. It's about what works best. That's what we should always be asking. So I don't know. This technique kind of sucks too, man. I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed that uh, I don't like any of these. I was hoping I mean, I mean, shoot, we, I did a video of Master Wong and I, I agreed with a lot of what he said. Looks like they're defending against a rear hanging choke. <laughs> All right, so she's gonna do a two-on-one grip, which is good. 
That prevents the uh, choke from getting close to you. She's changing her elevation, super duper good, that anytime someone grabs you from behind, you wanna instantly lower yourself and widen your base. This makes you harder to pick up because um, they've probably positioned themselves in a way that makes it easy to pick you up, and so you change your orientation suddenly. You can imagine how difficult it would be to try to like carry a couch if the couch just constantly transformed its size, right? That's what we're doing. That we're making ourselves bigger and lower so that suddenly all the weight of my body gets dropped to the small of their back. She's in a fairly decent horse stance, which is where your legs are wide and toes are pointed forward. That gives you a really solid base, makes you harder to pick up and harder to knock down. The two on one on the arm, super good as well. Really dig that. So far we're so good. Maybe maybe we're getting a good one. Uh-huh. Yeah, super good advice there. So what she's saying here is that, that we wanna turn our chin away from the elbow that's around our neck because if the arm's coming across this way and I turn towards it, I get choked, see that? So I always turn my head. Anytime someone puts their arm around your neck, you're gonna do two on one, keep it tight. We actually teach a similar technique in our online course, Kempo 360 Dot com. Uh, it's called Japanese Stranglehold B, and it's the same kind of idea. We want to get this two-on-one and turn our chin away from that choke so that we aren't being choked. So um, very good advice on her end. So, so far, we're doing good. She's got the two-on-one, she's made base, tucked her chin, and turned away from the elbow, preventing the choke and making it harder for her to be picked up. Let's see where she goes from here. Nice tight pluck, goes down. Oh, looks like she's kind of going in for a dancer sort of mo motion. So the step behind them, um, once again, that's a pretty good move too. Um, especially if you have all of those controls, that step won't be very hard. You can do it very quickly. Um, believe it or not, from this position, if she just turns her head towards her opponent's ribs, she can just slip right out the back door. Uh, we call this technique dancer. That's actually in the second belt of Kempo 360. Um, but or, well, that's what we'd call if you slipped out the back door there. Um, let's see what she does. It looks like she may be going for like a helicopter throw um, where she knocks her over her legs. So let's see if that's what she does. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, she's going for the scoop throw from judo. So she's gonna pick those legs up, thrust her hips forward and dump her behind her, I presume. Thrust hips forward, dump her back. Yep, boom. Cool, cool. Okay, nice. She was kind of she was kind of nice in how she angled her opponent. Normally, when you do this throw, the person goes straight to your six o'clock because this girl she's demoing on is so tiny. She's like gently laying her down to the side, which is maybe why she chose her as her uke so that she could manipulate her body slowly so she could show the techniques. Um, but yeah, this is a basic throw from judo. We call it the scoop throw. Japanese for the scoop throw is sukuinagi. Uh, but yeah, they're gonna pick you up and dump you back. Um, over their thigh. Uh, this is a throw that, uh, as, assuming assuming that you have sufficient surprise and off balance, uh, it does work. Um, I generally think the in this position, I'd still prefer just to kind of slip out that back door. I think a takedown is a great idea because it puts leaves you up and them on the ground. Um, and of course, most judo throws work pretty well for smaller people once they've mastered judo that's very important it's not just because they studied judo they got good at it but yeah if you if you play with any black belt in judo you'll see that even very small judoka um are are able to throw much bigger people so anything that's like a judo throw which of course comes from japanese jujitsu so we can see that connection um most judo throws are going to be extremely effective okay so that that technique uh was not half bad not half bad, okay? <laughs> so up to this point, these techniques have not been all that good. I am I think she did a lot good there. So the person comes behind you, let's, let's kind of tick off everything that works. So she lowered her base. Most important thing is somebody grabs you. She turns her head away from the elbow, tucking her chin. Most important thing is someone's trying to choke you. She does that two-on-one grip to the arms, super good. Everybody who studies Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo are familiar with this grip. That's super duper good. She moves behind them, that's fairly good. She should have just ducked her head out the hole that she created. That would have been the technique called Dancer from Kenpo 360. Um, but regardless of that, she goes in for that scoop throw from Judo, which 
is a good throw. I don't know if I do it in that situation, but this is the first technique she's done that I'm not like, hey, everything here is trash. A lot of this is actually very feasible. I think the only problem with a scoop throw um, in this particular situation is just that there are better options. And once again, like we talk about, it doesn't matter what works, it matters what works best. All right, so I think we should have one more. All right, so we are in guard. All right, so now we're getting a little into, uh, uh, I mean, guard exists in most grappling arts, but this is most famous in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I've been studying Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, since I was very young. I started formally studying it in 2006. Gives you an idea of how long I've been doing it. Uh, so yeah, this is called guard and the person is choking her. Uh, basic if then statement. If you are on the ground and you are on your back, then you want to have your opponent in your guard. What guard is allowing her to do by having her legs around her opponent, she's able to control the weight of her opponent with her legs. So at no point can the person really bear down on you and completely crush you and pin you. You're able to manipulate their weight. Particularly people with bad base, which is most people, guard lots of times just makes people top topple over. There's so many times when I'm doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'm going with like a white belt and I got a guard around them and just like the sh weight of my legs make people fall over like if you I don't know if you've ever done something like like tied a towel around a cat and they just kind of give up and fall like guard lots of times does that to people so um, even a, against a train fighter guard is a neutral position at best against a someone who knows nothing guard lots of times is a really like victorious position now the person's reaching out and choking her which is of course arm bar city for anybody who studies judo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well as somebody who studies Kempo 360. <laughs> I keep on making my plugs. Looks like she's doing a double Lan Sao from Wing Chun and pushing away. She's going to stack high and she may be going for an arm bar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Damn. Disappointing. Okay. She makes me sad with that arm bar. <laughs> um, uh, this arm bar is predicated on the fact that they don't let go. <laughs> So if they refuse to let go, you're going to be able to get this like double arm bar that she's getting here. But what's actually going to happen is the second that pressure comes to their elbows, they're going to pull their hands back. That arm bar will cease to work and then they're going to start hitting you. And at that point, you better have a really good punch defense in guard. Um, let's really quickly just pull up a video. All right, so this is a great example of how it should be done, uh, that he secured that arm. If you look at this guy doing it, the actual way you do an arm bar from guard, the way he's doing it, is as you can see, the guy's arms are extended, but instead of like doing this like double lawn sow, he's creating a firm grip on the person's arm. And then he proceeds to get the person off balance with one of his legs, and then he's going to just simply bring his other leg over. This allows him to really isolate just one arm, which is a better arm bar than getting the two, believe it or not, because they have less strength. And then he extends his hips and breaks the elbow. Very, very simple, um, actually considerably more effective than this arm bar. This is an arm bar I see taught a lot in Krav Maga. It's a bad arm bar, it doesn't actually work uh, it, well, it works if this guy, like for some reason refuses to let go, but what's going to happen in real life is you're going to go for this and they're just immediately going to pull, they're going to slide out. And, um, this also, because this is actually another no note, there is a pass in jujitsu. We call the double underhook pass. This is also going to generally set you up for that position as well. So I would not recommend this particular arm bar. Well, that's a fucking shame. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Joanna. So official. Um, all of those techniques, except for one, were really bad self-defense for women. One of my biggest frustrations when it comes to women's self-defense is this, it's always this very low level self-defense that, um, is then done poorly. So it's not the basics, like it's not low level as in the basics, it's low level as in like the techniques are not done well, they're done ineffectively, they're taught by people who have a very limited knowledge of how these techniques actually work. I don't know what uh, Joanna's uh, background is when it comes to martial arts. It may be jujitsu, it may be Krav Maga, um, but what she is teaching in these videos, uh, they will work great against someone her size or smaller. And that's just not self-defense. And this is a really common mistake we see amongst most people who study martial sport is that just because it works on someone in your weight class 
doesn't mean it will work on someone who's above your weight class. And when it comes to self-defense, we ignore all techniques that are overly size specific. If it won't work on someone who outraise you by 50 pounds, it's not good self-defense because someone outweighing you by 50 pounds is not an unrealistic situation. I'm not saying someone who weighs 100 pounds doing it to someone who weighs 300 pounds. I'm simply saying someone who weighs 150, like most women, versus somebody who weighs 200, like most men. So that's not an unrealistic ask. And a lot of these techniques just would not work on a larger opponent, which is quite disappointing. However, if you do want to learn self-defense techniques that work on a larger opponent, you can do that on our website, Kempo360.com, where I teach the 18 essential techniques for survival. This is the base curriculum that I teach to all of my students when they first come into my school. That's at Kempo360.com. And of course, if you've made it to the end of the video and you're not subscribed, why aren't you? You're clearly being entertained, so be sure to click the subscribe button, click the little thumbs up button, and hit that bell. Share it with your friends. You know how to do the whole YouTube thing. We're trying to grow this channel, and we can only do it with your help. And of course, as I always do, a lot of people will comment on my videos, having not made it all the way to the end of the video. So to prove to me that you made it to the end, I want you to include the phrase, triple arm bar. That's a double arm bar. Include the phrase triple arm bar somewhere in your comment to me uh, so that you and I will know you made it to the end. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. Fight on.